Okay, here you go. After a little adjustment, there's forward. Release your handle. Here's reverse. Good in you, not so bad. It's uh, what the fuck day is it? Saturday. Like, uh, fuck, I don't know. Are y'all dusty? I haven't picked this fucking uh, camera up in like fucking. I don't know, why is it all loose? It seemed like you're flopping around there. Whatever. Um. I haven't picked this camera up in like four days. So I figured I better do something. I pulled the old fucking uh, Super C in and started, got the oil dropped on it. And I was like, man, maybe these guys want to see me do an oil change or some shit. I don't fucking, probably not. But whatever. We're going to do it anyway. Okay, so already, obviously, we drained the oil on it. Low hour, but it still had, we're still cleaning the stuff out of that engine. She got a little sludge in her. No worries, that's why we do this stuff. Um, I'm gonna use Crescent Wrench because you're welcome, Luke. I piss everyone off. Okay, elements over on this side. I already did the air cleaner again. Took that off, um, cleaned it all out. It has been braised at one point, somebody wing dinged her. And then uh, it was painted, but no big deal there. We'll stop tomorrow and top this thing off with fuel. Um, tomorrow's going to be Connor's Plow Day in Elk River. So it's a it's a pretty good jaunt. I don't know, an hour and 45, two hours, something like that. Probably take me uh, at least a solid two hours. Because I drive slow. Um, where's my tripod? Oh, it's in the back since I left it in there during Plow Day because I never... Uh, film anything on plow day here maybe i'll film at connor's place i don't fucking know come on there perfect all right now you got a seat you got you gotta gotta extend your legs oh yeah this cheap piece of shit every time i look at buying a new one on amazon i'm like yeah this one's good enough for now the last three i've been been had have been junk so Another uh, fresh orange moment. Luke loves this shit. I know he does. It's fine. This uh, tractor sat outside for a bit, so all little sludging and stuff going on is not uncommon. Guess I could take that back out of the way. O ring. That wasn't stuck in there like the other one was when I changed oil on it the first time. The other one was stuck in there fucking bad. How come this one? O ring seems like it's too fat. I'm not sure this is the right filter. I'm not sure that this is the right filter. Is it the right filter? Huh? Yeah, yeah. All things point to yes. Why is this uh And you see that oil is not that dirty. It just looks like <sighs> Luber's nuts on there. 
And then, uh, this is why it sounds like it peels out hard. So you press the fucker in there. Like this. That bastard in there with the screwdriver. You gotta be careful that you're not stretching it though. You wanna be pushing it straight down, not uh so you're not stretching the fucker, otherwise you're when you get over to the other side here, you'll have a whole bunch of extra and then you're screwed. If you get it lined up just right, and uh, drops right in there, but otherwise, it's not where the fuck. I'm starting to back and work my way around this way then. Fuck's sake. So I should do this is what I should have done to start with. You go in a few different places, space it out like this, start it in there, and that helps keep you from stretching the fucker so bad in so many different spots. Right? Like, yay. And then you can just work in between the ones that are already in there. See how that works? Fuck seek. Okay, so it is uh, Napa 70 or 1172. I had an old kite case IH filter on there because that was one that I had NOS down in the pole barn. And for a low hour change, I figured fuck it. So that's through there. And that uh, fucking gasket went right in after I turned the camera off. I had no problem. <whistles> right around it. Walked it right in there. Zip, zam, zoom. Um, what do I do with my wrench? My wrench. Uh, I don't know what I do with my wrench. My wrench, my wrench, my wrench, my wrench. I'll get, I'll get a different presser wrench for the, oh, I'm sitting on the tire. <laughs> Here, Luke. This is for you, bud. I like to spin that filter housing a little bit, kind of seat it on there. Perfect. Uh, what are you using for oil in that, Rick? Straight 30 weight. Um, as things progress here, I'm gonna be switching to pro boxes, six gallon pro boxes, but bay boxes, whatever the fuck they call them. 
Um, but I think we're gonna still keep this for our gallon jugs because I still run uh, my barn chain oil and my 5W40 and all that stuff. I don't know how fast we'd actually be cycling through all that. Um, and then quart jugs of specific oil, so we'll be building another rack for the bay boxes. Um, 520, 530, 1030. Um, probably a couple different kinds of transmission fluid and things like that. And some 1540 for customer stuff. So, not that I'm doing a lot of diesel work, but from time to time. So down here, oh, hang on, before you sit down, before you sit down. So, this is going to be your your fill fill level right there this is your uh here filler start dumping until she comes out the hole that's my philosophy anyway y'all can do what you want see that I didn't even spill that time. Perfect. How many did she take, Rick? I don't fucking remember. Dump it in until it quits, starts coming out the hole. It'll be fine. Okay. Well, the uh, as you can see from the result of my pigment down there, I got to not paying attention and I got a little bit on the floor, but. Um, what is your problem? Yeah. She's full of oil. Um, obviously, we'll see if that leaks when I start it up. I decided to drain the uh, rear axle again because this thing was had a lot of water in it when I drained it the first time. And you can see over there by the pan, um, it still had some in it. We're still in the process of... Running through, cleaning everything out. It's gotten a lot better. It wasn't uh, like pudding this time, so that's good. So we're going to fill that again. Um, another five gallons in it, and then we'll get some run time on it. We can go a little bit longer on it, probably for the summer on it anyway, for what little use it's going to get. A little bit more plowing, and um, because we don't have hydraulics on this, it won't be running the... Uh, rake or anything like that but it'll get some use around the farm and then uh we'll dump it again this fall and then i got some 85 90 full synthetic and that's what we'll probably put in this thing so book calls for straight 80 weight which is you know 80 80 90 i'm gonna run some uh iso 320 in it it's a little bit lighter equivalent and that kind of seems like it's helping to get around there and clean things out a little bit. So, disagree with me. I don't give a shit. It's fine. And then, uh, so we're going to fill that up five gallons because it has the belt pulley on it. If it doesn't have the belt pulley, it's four and three quarter gallons. Perfect. And then uh, we'll grab the grease gun. We'll hit this thing. Get her fired up. And uh, we'll get everything else loaded up and ready for plow day. So, uh, Feather was going to do a kind of a detailed show you where all the greaser kind of things show you where everything is on this tractor. But then I remembered, you know. Luke could probably approve if I did something like that. And I can't have that shit. So, we're not going to do that shit. We're going to hit about half of them. So that way, it's believed that I didn't grease the rest of it. Which is fine. It's good and fine. I'm okay with it. So there, you get 50% Luke. Based on the puddle on the floor, it's got oil in it. That actually came out of the drain, or the check. 
versus versus the uh, leaking. It doesn't leak, by the way. So currently in the process of filling up the rear end with some uh, ISO 320, which I think is going to work just fine in this thing, especially for the low hours. Pulling the two bottom, we're not loading the hell out of it, so. I had to use a 5W30 oil jug for my my transfer. I didn't feel like trying to drag the barrel over here and pump it in, so we just pump it into the jug and then dump it in there. Little at a time, little at a time. So after I get this thing filled up, I got two more gallons to put in it. We'll fire it up and uh, we'll get this and the plow loaded on the trailer get everything strapped down and we'll be ready to go for tomorrow i just realized another thing i was going to do here um uh, so the linkage for the throttle is it needs to go in that hole because right now to get to um, full throttle you almost you have to advance it so far past to get to where you want to be so we're gonna put it there because I think that'll give me a, a little extra pull and this here is we're not even utilizing that side so you got to be there to be at like idle so I'm gonna show you how we uh, pull that apart real quick Ain't no thing but chicken wing. We'll grab a needle nose pliers. Which ones do we want? Um, I could actually use these and those. Or these. I like those ones. Them ones are nice. Nice! Mm. Gold straight pipe acre says. Ryan up there in uh, Saskatchewan, if you guys aren't familiar and are not subscribed to Straight Pipe Bakers, kiss my ass. Um, why the fuck are you so, why do you get so fucking dirty? Here. It's better. Okay. And take a cutter pin out. This in. And uh, you're gonna hold back on that washer and spring. So that when you pull a bastard off, it doesn't go flying out at you. That'd be good, huh? The fuck? Mm. It's one of them days. Um, uh, um. Should have thought this through a little bit more. So that uh, cutter pin was all but worn off. Thing was pretty much ready to fall apart anyway, I guess, huh? Come on. It uh, sits in there kind of kitty wampus. It's been bent, I think. I don't know why else it would sit in there. It kind of dives off at an angle. It's the. Sometimes I guess it is the angle of your dangle. There we go. Now we can go into this hole. pin selection this is just the cheap one for heavier applications go buy decent ones these ones work for this kind of shit but this one's probably too big for that isn't it you see in there yeah 
That one's too big. And I like the tiny one. That one. They don't go very big in this set. That's the biggest one you got, which isn't very heavy at all. Um, ball joints, tie rod ends, they're okay. But you get into some of the machinery stuff, it gets quite a bit heavier than that. And now we're... This one's way too long. They don't come with like real short ones. They're just one length. So we cut it off. Then we'll split it. I think. Yeah. Then we'll cut it again. Then we'll close it. The pliers. And now we have our shortened up little fucking <whistles> sticker in there. Sticker in there. Where are we going here, Rick? Why can't I fucking see? I'm too fat. If I wasn't so fat, I'd be able to fit in there. Oh, I can see the hole now. <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Perfect. Got that. So I go back to our washer or our spring in our washer and we'll grab a new copper pin. We go bigger than that. Is that big? That'd be pretty fucking mint. Oh yeah. I like got the biggest one I can use in the application. That's not gonna really matter, is it? No. Wait, took that off to the side a little bit first. Bink. Bring this one up and around. A little bit. Trim it a little bit. Bring that one over. Back and around. Trim that son bitch off too. Yeah. Much better. Much nicer. Let's fire this bad boy up. Neutral. I don't know where the throttle is going to be at this, on this, one at this, now. If I was buying this, I wouldn't be putting ISO 320 in it either. Especially while well, EP ISO 320 is fucking expensive. So Randy Olson, once again, I appreciate the hell out of you, man. That's uh you can sit right here, huh? How's that for a fucking view? Oh yeah.
Repeat that.